If someone told you that green hydrogen could one day cost just $1 per kilogram, you might assume it would require extraordinary advances in solar efficiency, ultra-cheap wind power, or electrolyzers that cost almost nothing to build. For years, those have been the three pillars of the affordable green hydrogen dream. But that dream has always run into hard economic walls. Renewable electricity is still expensive in many regions, electrolyzers remain capital-intensive, and the real-world efficiency of large-scale hydrogen systems has consistently fallen short of what early models predicted. The truth is that for all the excitement around green hydrogen and its promised role in decarbonizing heavy industry, transportation, fertilizers, steelmaking, shipping, and energy storage, costs remain stubbornly high. That's why a new wave of thermochemical hydrogen technologies has captured global attention. Technologies that flip the traditional model upside down by eliminating the need for solar or wind power entirely. And if these systems actually scale, they could trigger the biggest cost reset in the history of hydrogen production. The hook is simple but almost shocking. Imagine producing clean hydrogen without depending on electricity. No electrolyzer stacks, no heavy grid integration, no solar megaproject, no offshore wind farm, no curtailment issues, and no intermittency. Instead, imagine a process that relies entirely on heat, specifically geothermal heat, industrial waste heat, concentrated solar thermal, nuclear heat, or even next-generation high-temperature reactors. Any scalable thermal source becomes the engine. If this approach works, the economics of hydrogen shift radically, and suddenly regions that lack abundant solar or wind resources could become major hydrogen producers. This isn't science fiction. It's an emerging field known as thermochemical water splitting. And at the center of the conversation is a technology that claims to do something that, until recently, was considered impossible at scale. Split water using mostly heat rather than electricity. At the center of this movement is the idea that green hydrogen's biggest cost driver, renewable electricity, can be replaced with something cheaper, more stable, and more abundant. Electricity accounts for up to 70% of the cost of green hydrogen today. That means even a small reduction in electricity cost could move the needle. But what if electricity itself no longer needed to be part of the equation? What if hydrogen could be manufactured the same way certain chemicals are produced in industrial plants, through heat-driven cycles that use thermal energy to power the reaction? That is the core idea behind a new class of hydrogen systems, including the thermo-loop concept that companies like New Hydrogen have been promoting. In theory, these systems use high-temperature heat to drive a catalytic loop that splits water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen, regenerates its materials, and continues the cycle indefinitely. If successful, the only inputs are heat and water, no electricity. No electrolyzers, no iridium or platinum, no gigantic solar farm. This shift matters because while electricity is expensive, Heat, especially geothermal or industrial waste heat, is already available in massive quantities worldwide. Thousands of industrial facilities release huge amounts of waste heat every day. Geothermal reservoirs store mind-boggling amounts of thermal energy. High-temperature reactors and advanced modular nuclear designs could one day supply heat far more efficiently than electricity. In countries like Iceland, Kenya, Japan, Indonesia, the United States, Turkey, and the Philippines, geothermal reservoirs capable of sustaining continuous high temperature flows are already tapped for power generation. But geothermal electricity only uses a fraction of the heat that the Earth naturally produces. Much of that energy remains unused because converting it to electricity is inefficient and expensive. But if geothermal heat could be used directly for hydrogen production, bypassing electricity entirely, the energy economics shift dramatically. The logic becomes even more powerful when you consider regions with shallow geothermal gradients or areas where enhanced geothermal systems are being developed. In places like Nevada, Utah, Australia, New Zealand, Chile, the East African Rift, and parts of Europe, engineering teams are learning to harvest deep heat using advanced drilling techniques borrowed from oil and gas. If those same heat sources could power thermochemical hydrogen systems, the world would suddenly unlock a thermal to hydrogen pathway capable of delivering hydrogen for prices that solar and wind may never reach.
Unlike electricity, which fluctuates based on weather and grid conditions, geothermal heat is baseload. It doesn't spike, it doesn't drop, it doesn't depend on seasons, and it doesn't require storage. It is predictable, steady, constant, and stable, the ideal input for a continuous thermochemical reaction. To understand why this matters so much, you need to look at the economics of traditional green hydrogen. Electrolysis requires electricity, and lots of it. A typical kilogram of hydrogen needs around 50-55 kilowatt hour of electricity. If your electricity is cheap, say 2 cents per kilowatt hour, hydrogen can theoretically approach $1 per kilogram. But very few regions in the world can supply electricity that cheaply, and even when they can, electrolyzer efficiency losses raise the real cost. Modern electrolyzers also require significant capital investment, leading to higher operational and maintenance expenses. When you look at real projects under construction across the United States, Europe, Africa, Asia, or Latin America, you find hydrogen prices routinely modeled between $4 and $7 per kilogram, far above the $1 per kilogram target needed for widespread economic viability. Thermo-based hydrogen systems aim to bypass these bottlenecks entirely. If the cost of heat is low, especially geothermal or industrial waste heat, the cost of hydrogen production could collapse. Imagine an industrial facility that wastes 300 degrees heat, heat every day from chemical or steel production. That heat currently dissipates into the environment. But with a thermochemical water splitting system, the same facility could convert that free heat into hydrogen, use it internally, or sell it into the market. The economics become unprecedented. The potential distribution network expands. Hydrogen becomes accessible to industries that previously found it too expensive. This is where the $1 per kilogram possibility starts to emerge. The economics depend not on electricity or electrolyzers, but on the cost and availability of heat. Geothermal in many regions can deliver heat at extremely low cost, especially once drilling and infrastructure are in place. Industrial waste heat is effectively free. Nuclear heat is steady, reliable, high temperature, and abundant. Even concentrated solar thermal plants, which use mirrors instead of photovoltaic cells, can deliver high temperature heat far more efficiently and cheaply than generating electricity. Each of these heat sources opens a new frontier for hydrogen production. Yet the promise of thermochemical hydrogen isn't just cost, it's the potential for massive scalability. Electrolyzers require specialized materials, sophisticated manufacturing, and rare catalysts like iridium. Thermochemical systems, in contrast, can potentially be built using common materials and simple reactors. That alone could accelerate adoption in countries that lack the capacity to build electrolyzers or import vast amounts of renewable energy equipment. It also means hydrogen can be produced in places where electricity infrastructure is weak or unreliable, opening new economic opportunities in emerging markets. So why hasn't this approach been adopted already? Because scaling thermochemical hydrogen is extremely difficult. High temperature cycles require materials that can withstand repeated heat exposure without degrading. Maintaining reaction stability over long periods requires advanced engineering. Water purification is critical. Heat delivery must be consistent and precisely managed. These are not easy problems to solve, but research in this field has accelerated since 2022 with advancements in catalysts, looping materials, heat-resistant coatings, and control systems. Several companies have shown successful lab-scale demonstrations. New Hydrogen reported its first hydrogen production results in mid-2025. Academic teams in Europe and Asia have achieved similar breakthroughs, proving the concept even if the path to commercialization remains long. The most exciting part is the growing interest in geothermal synergy. In 2024 and 2025, multiple research groups began exploring geothermal-powered thermochemical cycles. Geothermal plants often operate at temperatures suitable for certain chemical loops, and deep heat technologies continue to push temperature boundaries. When you combine a stable geothermal heat source with a thermochemical hydrogen system, you get a hybrid that is baseload, clean, sustainable, and cost competitive. In Iceland, geothermal hydrogen pilots are already under discussion. In Kenya, geothermal developers have evaluated hydrogen hubs near geothermal wells. 
In Japan, researchers have proposed coupling geothermal with metal oxide thermochemical loops. Everywhere the idea appears, it sparks the same question. Could geothermal and thermochemistry become the backbone of global hydrogen production? If the answer is yes, the implications are enormous. Green hydrogen would no longer be restricted to regions with abundant solar and wind resources. Countries with geothermal heat could become hydrogen exporters. Industrial facilities could create clean hydrogen on-site. Hydrogen prices would detach from electricity markets and instead align with heat availability. This disrupts the global hydrogen map and shifts competitive advantage toward countries with deep thermal resources. Of course, challenges remain. Scaling prototypes to full commercial systems will require investment, engineering breakthroughs, and rigorous field testing. Thermochemical loops need durability proven over thousands of cycles. Heat management systems must be refined, capital costs need to drop, water sourcing and purification must be optimized, and regulatory frameworks must recognize thermochemical hydrogen as green when powered by renewable heat. But every breakthrough in this space suggests that the effort is worthwhile. Because if thermochemical hydrogen delivers, the world gets something it has never had before. Abundant, cheap, clean hydrogen that does not depend on the weather, the grid, or the availability of precious metals. The one that Lads Cadillard target, once considered unrealistic, suddenly becomes plausible when heat, not electricity, is the main input. Geothermal regions become global hydrogen hubs. Heavy industries that struggle to decarbonize gain a viable pathway. Countries without massive solar or wind capacity gain access to energy independence. And the cost of green hydrogen production could finally fall to levels that reshape global energy, transportation, chemicals, and industrial manufacturing. The transition from electricity-dependent hydrogen to heat-powered hydrogen could mark one of the most important shifts in the energy transition. In the end, this story comes down to one simple question. What happens when you no longer need solar or wind to make green hydrogen? The answer, if current research is correct, could be transformative. Thermochemical hydrogen may still be young and unproven at scale, but its potential is impossible to ignore. If this works, if heat-powered hydrogen truly reaches commercial scale, the hydrogen economy will no longer be held back by electricity costs or electrolyzer shortages. Instead, it will be fueled by one of the oldest and most abundant energy sources on the planet, heat. And if that happens, the world may finally see green hydrogen fall to $1 per kilogram and unlock a new era of clean, affordable, globally scalable energy.